Hello everyone, welcome to my video channel. Today I am going to talk about pest calcaneus deformity in children. I will start with an introduction, the causes or etiologies of pest calcaneus, the pathogenesis, the three forms of paralytic calcaneal food, problem in working with pest calcaneus and among the methods of surgical treatment. Okay, now let's begin. As an introduction, the calcaneal food or pest calcaneus is one of the most severe types of food deformities and is characterized by the presence of a fixed position of food extension without active flexion. In most cases, the development of this deformity is due to the lesion of the long flexors of the foot, primary the gastrocnemius muscle due to various disease of the nervous system. This picture illustrates the telepus calcaneus whereby the foot is in fixed extension without active flexion. Paralytic calcaneal foot deformity develops in 5-30% to of cases of neurogenic deformities of the feet in pediatric patients. It is most often detected in congenital spinal hernia, around 15-30% to of cases, cerebral palsy, around 6%, and myelodysplasia primary of myelodysplasia 1% of cases. The cases of calcaneal foot deformities due to secondary deformities are also described. For example, after treatment of club foot around 10% and traumatic injuries of the peripheral nerve around 3% of cases. The main pathogenesis for development of this deformity is paralysis of the posterior group of the tibial muscles while maintaining the function of the anterior and lateral muscle groups. As a result of a decrease or complete loss of function of the long flexors of the foot, an imbalance of forces between the flexors and extensors of the foot occurs with a sharp predominance of the extensors. As a result, the foot assumes the position of extreme extension and the calcaneal bone gradually changes from a horizontal position to a vertical position. And the calcaneal pitch increases to more than 30 degree with a normal range of 25 to 28 degree, sometimes reaching around 60 to 80 degree. This picture illustrates the calcaneal pitch or also known as calcaneal inclination angle. It is useful in assessing a medial height. This angle is formed on a weight-bearing lateral foot radiograph between the calcaneal inclination axis that is the most inferior part of the calcaneum and the supporting horizontal surface. The extension of the foot can reach to such an extent that the dorsal surface of the foot touches the front surface of the tibia and the calcaneotibial angle, which is normally 70 degree, can be reduced to 20 degree. This picture illustrates the calcaneotibial angle of 50 degree whereby the bisecting line between the mid-tibial shaft 90 degree to the tibial epiphysis and another line from the inferior most calcaneal bone and the talus is measured. Following the pathological position of the calcaneus, the osteoarticular relations between the calcaneus and the talus bone change. The calcaneostragaloid angle in the sagittal plane increases by 30 degree, normal range 20 to 25 degree 
where the talus bone deviates medially or laterally. The relationship in the frontal plane is are also disturbed. The frontal calcaneus tragaloid angle, a normal range of 20 to 40 degree, increases or decreases with the formation of calcaneal vagus or calcaneal varus deformity, respectively. This picture illustrates a lateral calcaneal view X-ray. On the left foot, the calcaneal tibial angle is 40 degree, the meris angle is 32 degree, surgical astragalocalcaneal angle is 52 degree. For B, it illustrates the X-ray post-surgical correction, whereby the calcaneal tibial angle is 80 degree. The meris angle is 0 degree. The sagittal astragalocalcanean angle is 35 degree. The front part of the foot rises due to thrust of the extensor muscle and is located above the level of the heel bone and middle section of the foot. In this regard, the angle between the talus bone and the first metatarsal bone, meris angle, increases to 25 to 30 degree, whereby the normal angle is only 0 to, 50, 0 to 5 degree. The degree of the foot deformity largely depends on the severity of neurological disorders, paralysis or paresis of the tibial muscle. This X-ray shows the meris angle or the lateral talus first metatarsal angle to identify the apex of deformity in patients with pest cavus and pest planus on lateral weight-bearing radiograph. It is an angle between a line drawn along the longitudinal axis of the talus mid-talar axis and the first metatarsal. The first metatarsal axis. Three forms of paralytic calcaneal foot deformity present. Number one, the initial phase of deformity with a partially preserved function of the perineal muscles. Number two, pronounced deformity of the pes calcaneus or pes calcaneal valgus with Preservation of the perineal muscle without loosening in the joint. Number three, pronounced deformity with paralysis of all muscles and looseness in all joints of the foot. During walking, the support is implemented on the heel bone and partly on the middle section of the foot depending on the degree and type of deformity. In cases of extreme deformity, only the calcaneal tuberosity is the support, where plantar callosity, ulcerations and calluses are formed. The forefoot is not involved in the support. With age, the deformity usually progresses. The dorsum of the foot noticeably shortens and retraction of the extensor tendons and the capsule ligament apparatus of the dorsum of the foot occurs. Methods of surgical treatment of calcaneal deformity can be divided into two main categories. One, in young and middle-aged pediatric patients, the standard of treatment is surgery on the soft tissue of the foot, including the elimination of the deformity and tendon muscle transposition with transfer of functionally preserved muscles to the position of the antagonist muscle that have fallen out. Number two, at an older age, a three-joint arthrodesis of the foot, osteostomy of the calcaneus, and the wish shape foot resections are performed to correct the calcaneal foot deformity. There is an opinion that performing corrective or arthrodesis surgery without restoring the muscle balance 
unfortunately does not provide a good results. In this regard, methods combining the corrective and arthrodesis surgery with tendon muscle transposition, namely grafting of the tendon of the long peroneal muscle and or, or the posterior tibial muscle are performed into the cacina canal with simultaneous shortening of the cacina tendon. Based on certain studies, this technique will fail due to the weakness of the transplanted muscles. The techniques of tenodosis of the Achilles tendon to the fibula is also used for additional stabilization of the calcaneus and prevention of recurrence of the deformity. Unfortunately, the results of treatment for this type of deformity are not always stable. The reasons for unsatisfactory results and relapse are persistent muscle imbalance and is increased due to the growth of the child as well as insufficient surgical correction. Yay, that's all for today. I hope you have learned something from this video. See you in the next one. Take care and bye.